Once you develop the skills to conduct qualified word studies, you will be able to research any topic or subject in the Bible. Even though the word study is the foundation of successful Bible research, it's limited in its scope and effectiveness. The simple word study format does not allow you the flexibility of researching the various words, applications, and influences that are recorded in the volume of the Bible. Now I have come to the crux of the matter. How can the student of the Bible expand the word study format to incorporate a wider arena of research? The answer to this question is simple. When the word study method will not meet the needs of your research project, expand your horizons and conduct a topical study. The topical study is also a useful tool when a student seeks to dissect a verse or verses of scripture into keyword study formats. The secret to any successful Bible study is organization. No matter which study format you use, organization is the key to success. Each Bible research project should have three parts, an introduction, a main body, and a conclusion. Each part of your research project is interdependent on each other. Should you be casual and sloppy in any section of your study, your lack of attention will affect the entire project. The secret to a qualified introduction is the topical thesis statement. When you sit down to begin a topical study, spend a few moments defining the goals, objectives, and parameters of your study. Once you have established the conditions of your study, you need to record these conditions in a well-constructed thesis statement. A good topical thesis statement will be simple but exact as to what you seek to discover in your study. Let's review this example. In the Bible, much is said and taught concerning the pursuit of knowledge. Conduct a topical study on knowledge in the Old and New Testaments. Seek to identify the different types of knowledge in the Bible. Also seek to understand how we can learn each type of knowledge. Also seek to identify the influence each type of knowledge will have on us. In this simple introduction, I defined my topical study. In the thesis statement, I clearly established the goals, objectives, and parameters of my study. The first goal is to identify the different types of knowledge used in the Bible, while the second goal is to identify the way each type of knowledge could be acquired. And the third goal is to identify the influence each type of knowledge would have on me. My topical thesis statement did set a parameter that limited my research project to the study of knowledge in the Bible only. This parameter will help prevent subject wandering and keep me on task. It's a good practice to personalize your thesis statement in order to discover the influence your study topic would have on you. Let me spend a few moments describing some of the different ways you can use the topical study. You can use this study to research scriptural teachings presented in the Bible. You can use the topical study to research truth in the Bible that requires the use of synonyms. For example, should you research salvation, you might include the words redemption, atonement, and propitiation. When you study a truth that requires the use of synonyms, you're researching one topic that can be equally described by several words. You can use this study format to research the key words of themes presented in one or more verses. For example, should you desire to conduct a topical study on Proverbs 9.10, you would research the key words of fear, wisdom, knowledge, holy, and understanding. Each of these methods 
is an effective tool to aid you in your research. All you need to do is record in your introduction the direction you desire your study to take. The introduction of the topical study is simple, consisting of only a topical thesis statement. The topical introduction may be simple in construction, but proper layout of this simple statement is paramount to the overall success of your topical project. With this said, the heart of the topical study is the main body, because this phase of your project will be the most demanding and time consuming. The main body of the topical study is slightly different from the format presented in the word study. When you assemble the main body of your topical study, your goal is not to research the usage of one Hebrew or Greek word, but your intent is to identify the various Hebrew or Greek words used in the Bible to describe your topic. In order to accomplish this task, you should identify which English words best describe your topic. Now is the time you would include the usage of synonyms that clarify your study direction. The first step in the construction of your main body is to identify which words you will research, and you should know which synonyms influence your study. Record these words on your worksheet under the heading of Topic Word Synonyms. The second step is to open your Strong's Exhaustive Concordance to the main concordance and locate your English word or words. Scan the scriptural listings and identify the different Hebrew or Greek reference numbers listed under your topic. Record these different numbers on your worksheet under the heading of Strong's Number. When you see numbers in numerical progression, you will find that they are different forms of the same word. To research each of these words separately is redundant and time consuming. The best way to research these words is to group them together and study their influence as a group. It's also helpful to distinguish between Old and New Testament words. Step three is to record the transliterations of the numbers you have identified on your worksheet under the heading of transliteration. The fourth step is not recorded on your topical worksheet because it's a procedure you perform separate from your worksheet. Once you have identified your study words to be used by your topic, you should complete separate word study worksheets for each word or group of words. These four steps comprise the main body format. Let me challenge you with this thought. After you have completed your main body, Take the time to consider the antonyms of your study topic. By doing this, you are using the positive-negative method of analytical thinking. Up to this point, I depicted three different applications of the topical study. But there is one more application. I waited until this time to describe this application because you needed to understand the proper format of the topical study. Often while I'm engaged in prayer and communion with the Lord, I receive seeds of truth. These illuminations are seeds of revelation the Holy Spirit plants in my mind. I meditate the nuggets of truth until I can formulate them into a research project. Let me explain. One time the Holy Spirit spoke to me this simple truth. The mind of Christ is the mind of the cross. Eventually I formulated the seed thought into a topical thesis statement. Since the mind of Christ is the mind of the cross, then what does the Bible teach concerning the mind of Christ? How do the scriptures portray the cross? What influence does the mind of Christ and his cross have on me? How can I identify with Christ and his cross? And how can I yield to their workings in my life? Each of these questions formulated the goals objectives and parameters of my topical study. Over a period of several months, this seed thought, in conjunction with other illuminations, eventually gave birth to a 15-week course 
and syllabus entitled The Cross Principle. If you can formulate your seed thoughts into topical thesis statements, you can research your illumination in the volume of Scripture. The conclusion for a topical study is more in depth than the conclusion for the word study. In the topical study, the conclusion is a correlation of the main body. But remember, your main body is composed of individual word studies. In order to write your conclusion to your topical study, you must extract from each word study summary the necessary information which answers or clarifies your topical thesis statement. In order to write a thorough topical conclusion, correlate your meditations with your introduction. Look to find similarities and seek to establish cause and effect in your word studies. Your topical conclusion should be recorded under the heading of Topical Study Summary. Your study is finished when you have answered your study thesis statement. When you conduct study projects, organization is the prime key to all qualified Bible research. The only thing you should remember is to stay within the parameters of your study direction. Also try to maintain the pyramid organizational structure in your studies. Should your research require two or more topical studies, you should develop one major topical study that will organize and control your other minor topical studies, and these minor topical studies should control your word studies. In simple terms, you should have one topical study that controls all other studies. When your intention is to research one major topical study that will control two or more minor topical studies, all you need to do is develop a simple but exact topical introduction and collate all minor topical summaries into one major topical summary. At first glance, Bible research seems daunting and time-consuming. This may be the case, but remember the famous quote made by Lao Tzu, founder of Taoism. A journey of a thousand miles must begin with a single step. Don't shy away from difficult projects because of their massive size. A major research project can be conducted one day at a time. My personal longest research project was four years in length, but this Everest of a study was climbed one step at a time. Organization is the key to massive projects of this nature. At this point, the topical study format shines. By using this technique, you can conduct a study of a thousand miles, one step at a time. <laughs>